Hallelujah. We are officially entering into our fasting program for those who have not started. For one, I have, this is, I've done it for one week already. In other words, I'm doing it for the whole of February. But officially the sixth today we are beginning because it will end on the 27th or 28th as the case may be. Uh, the last Sunday is 27th. So if you start today, you can still accomplish your 21 days by the end of the month. So please remember that it's a fasting and praying season, waiting on God. So this is an official reminder. We don't have to remind you again the patterns of our fasting. We leave it at, at your discretion and at your, at your own circumstance because your work patterns, um, living patterns are so different. You, work, you may be working at all times and it's not convenient for you to fast then, but always remember our fasting, the minimum hours of fasting is 12 hours. If you fast up to 12 hours a day, you have done what you have completed for that day. You can go for 15 hours, for 20 hours, for whatever number of hours, but not less than 12 hours. And when you fast, observe the fasting protocols as much as you can. Amen. And the Lord will help you as you go on. Remember, the fasting should be backed up with the reading of the New Testament. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. We thank God for the grace for that fasting. The Lord will help you as you go along because you are going to accomplish much. Amen. And for today, by the grace of God, We want to talk about an important topic relating to the season we are in, the season of waiting on God. The topic is prepping or preparing, prepping for waiting on God or to meet with God. Waiting on God means being in the presence of God or meeting with God staying in a meeting with God. That's what waiting on God means. Our Bible reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, 29 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, 29 to 31. Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. Prepping for waiting on God or to meet with God. When you are waiting on God, you are in a meeting with God. In other words, you are sitting in his presence. Amen. And as I said, Isaiah 40, 29 to 31, we have just read as the Bible reading for today. And our memory verse is taken from the last verse of that Bible reading, Isaiah 40, 31. And he says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. And as I said, waiting upon the Lord is meeting with God, sitting in his presence. That is waiting upon the Lord. And if we look at this passage, this is our memory verse. It said that they that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. Do you want to renew your strength? Are you weary? Are you fatigued? Are you exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically? What, do you, what should you do? You wait upon the Lord. Go into his presence. Even if you said nothing, sit in his presence. Amen? He said, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. When you are weary and tired and exhausted, the normal thing, the natural thing that follows is you are down. You are unable to receive enough strength or have energy to do the things that you should normally do. But the Bible says you will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles. Instead of lying down and being exhausted, you will be lifted up. The Bible says when they are saying throwing down, you are saying being lifted up. Amen? I say they will they shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. You know of the prophet who outran chariots on foot. He outran them. Why? Because being waiting upon the Lord. And they will walk and not faint. You will not faint. You will not pass out. Because it the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And we are going into a program and a season of waiting upon the Lord. Hallelujah. A time comes when you need to go to God for any one of several reasons. Even God invites you to this when he said in Isaiah 1.18, come now. And let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, and they shall be as white, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The Lord God Almighty invited you and I and said, Come, let us reason together. Your life is a project. You are a whole universe unto yourself. And your life is a project that I have initiated. And I'm in covenant with you to have that project executed. But I see that you might, have, you might be having some problems executing that project, accomplishing it, meeting and getting to your Expected, and that was why I say, I have a thought I'm thinking towards you. My thought for you is about that project that you are the manager and the executor of. But you don't seem to be making adequate progress. You say, come, let us visit you. Let us consider this project. Let us see what the problems might be. If it's sin, I will take care of that. Whatever might be the case, come on, let us listen to us. Sit down with me. Come and wait on me. Have a conference with me, a dialogue with me. Let us discuss this issue. Your life that is not going the way it ought to has a problem, and I want to fix it. Come, let us listen together. Come and wait on me. Sit in my presence. Enter into my presence. There. You will be made strong. You will renew your strength. If you are tired, I will rejuvenate you. That is what waiting on God means. And God said, come. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament said, come. All of you who, who labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. I will give you my own labor, which is light, uh, 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 which is easy, and I will give you my own uh, 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 ways, my own load that is light. Come. So the invitation is both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament because God's mind for you and thought for you is to take you peacefully to your expected and God wants you to succeed. He also observes that you live in the flesh, in the physical 
body on earth. And the things of the earth affect you that could make you tired, exhausted, frustrated, frustrated, stressed out. But it doesn't matter if you will come and sit in my presence and wait on me. I will renew your strength. I will strength, I will quicken you. Instead of exhaustion and be cast down, you will mount up with wings as eagle and fly. You will run and not be weary or worn out. You will walk and not faint. You keep going, perpetually going, renewed. Like Moses, the Bible said, even after 120 years, his strength did not abate. He was as strong as when he was 40 years of old of age. His strength was renewed. One 20 year old man trekking and walking on foot in the desert for 40 years and nothing happened to him. He was not tired. He did not faint just like many who were with him. Why? Because God was in their midst. So when you come to wait on God, you are coming into the presence of God. And when God is with you, you will renew your strength. You will be quickened. You will be strong. You will be rejuvenated. You will be renewed. You will be redirected. Your heart will be recalibrated. Errors that have come and polluted, try to pollute your heart and your mind will be synthesized and will, you, there will be sanctification, making you pure again to remain in the power and might of the almighty God. That is what we are called to do when we say come. Let us wait on God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You will see that in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come, all you who labor and are heavy laden. That invitation was extended to us. Amen. And coming to wait on God, this we often do by waiting on him in prayer and fasting. When we answer that invitation to come to him, how do we do it? In prayer and fasting. That is why whenever we have a program of prayer and fasting, we say we are waiting on God. And this waiting on God is actually another word for going before God. Going before God and present yourself or appearing before God and present yourself unto him that you might remain in his presence with him. No one just appears before the almighty God. To go before God requires some deliberate decisions and actions before going to wait on him. You don't just get up and say, go and wait on God and just saunter into that place carelessly. Even if you are invited to go and wait on the governor of your state or the president of the country or for your boss at work, you do certain things. You don't just work in there anyhow. You prepare to go before him or her. You make a conscious decision to present yourself before that person in authority. How much more God? Waiting on God is an undertaking that should be considered with all seriousness. God is not our mate. He's the almighty God. Many of us think we can be frivolous and careless with God. We even say certain things as if we are talking to another human being. Where is that holy reverence? Where is that holy fear? Where is that incomprehensible love for him and his love for us 
that holds us together in awe of him. I am someone who watches movies. Lately, Nollywood movies, Nigerian movies. In fact, I call Nollywood movies my babysitter. I just want to relax after a day's uh, uh, hustle and all that. You want to relax. I put on the movie I watch. I used to watch a lot of action movies from James Bond to all those spy movies and action movies. But be, I realized that they were becoming, as I get older, they are becoming more violent to my sensibility. So I look for light things to watch when I have time to watch. The one thing that I have, I will not, I will, will I say against the Nollywood movies is that they use the name of Jesus Christ in vain and frivolously all the time. Yes, it's a movie. But you don't use the name of God in vain. You are one or two. You may be having fun in your life doing all those things, but make sure you do not offend, offend by the word of your mouth and disregard and irreverence to God. Worst of all, you will see them saying something about the Holy Spirit and they begin to speak in fake tongues and all those. Can you imagine? The Bible tells you very, very clearly that you can be forgiven an offense against God and offense against Christ and on mankind and all those things. But the offense against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. Do they think that God put that word there in vain? And they do it. I look at it. Sometimes I just shut down. I just, at that point, I don't, I can't continue. How could people be that ignorant? And there are not other things to say other than to bring the ridicule, to ridicule the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. You cannot come before God irreverent. Even as Pentecostals or other Christians, we talk of going into a program of fasting and praying, waiting on God. Do we adequately consider what that meant? Do we prepare adequately to go before the Almighty God, the maker and creator of heaven and earth? Do we consider ourselves ready for that awesome presence, glory and majesty of our awesome God? Our intention may be good, it may be innocent, but that does not absolve us from the reality of our God. Praise the Lord. So we, I think it is proper that we consider these few points as we go into the presence of God in this our program. I assure you, when you rightly and properly wait on God, God is with you. You are perpetually within that time and during that time, covenantly in the presence of God. Because he will honor you. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you things that you do not know. Do you desire his presence? Do you truly desire to come into his presence? Remember why he said you should come. Let us reason together. Let us think. Let us banter. Let us, let us, let us, let us exchange conversation and dialogue. Can you imagine the almighty God 
the immortal, the transcendent God calling you, mere mortal, come and sit before me. When we know that he's a consuming fire, if nothing was done, you will die the moment you come into his presence. His presence will frighten you and shake you to the very foundation of your being. But as merciful and gracious and loving as he is, he will reduce his glory to accommodate you. And he says, come. How do you go to God? The Bible warned us, gave us a clear warning in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse, just let me read it. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5. Hallelujah. You may open to your Bible to that. Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 to 8. You say, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. For in the multitude of dreams and many worlds, there are also diverse vanities. But fear thou God. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violence, perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regarded, and there is, and there be higher than day. Amen? Praise the Lord. That is a clear warning for those who will come to the house of God or for those who will come into his presence. For those who intend to go and wait on God. Because waiting on God, as I said, is sitting in his presence. Amen? Hallelujah. Because of the above clear counsel in Ecclesiastes, it will be a prudence indeed to first of all think and consider the God you are about to go into his presence, to sit and wait on him. Have you thought about that? As you are preparing or as you have started, waiting on God, which you should do, which everyone from time to time must do. For he sent you. He gave you your primary destiny and objective and purpose in life. To find out if you are still on course on that destiny to accomplish that purpose, you will from time to time, as frequently and as often as you can, go before him 
to inquire to see if you are still on the path of destiny. I pray and hope that we all Christians should form this habit because it's very necessary. Hallelujah. For you to come and wait on him. In this side of existence on earth as we are today, it is impossible for our human minds to fully comprehend God's infinite and all inspiring nature. In the Bible, however, he has shared enough truth about himself to draw us into faith and worship. What's that all about? God, you cannot understand. He's a mystery. He is a spirit. You are in the flesh and natural. And if you have to go to him, will you not know who you are going to? Will it not be wise to understand the person you are going to? So that you will understand how to prepare for meeting him. So that you know with that knowledge, how to conduct yourself approvingly in his presence. So that you will not provoke a, 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 a adverse response from him. The purpose of your going before him is to receive his approval. If you don't go before him properly, you may receive disapproval. Even though he invited you to come. A wise person will take time to understand the man who is inviting you to come into his presence so that you can know how to dress, to prepare, and to conduct yourself before him approvingly. That is what we need to do to get into a program of waiting on God, if we are wise and prudent. Amen? Before you think of going to wait on God, it may be prudence, a prudent thing to consider the nature and characteristics of the awesome one you are about to go and spend time with in his presence. So you know how to prepare, conduct yourself in his presence. You may want to consider the following. Number one, that, that God is holy. God is holy. God's holiness is not a better version of the best we know. God is utterly and supremely untainted. His holiness stands above, apart Hallelujah. His holiness stands apart, unique and incomprehensible. Revelation 4. 8 to 11. Maybe because of time, we will not be able to read all the scriptures, but we read as much as we want, as we can. We're talking about the holiness of God, how incomprehensible it is, how it cannot be considered or compared to the holiness we think we know about. Let's read Revelation 4, 8 to 11. Revelation 4, 8 to 11. Are we read it? Revelation 4, 8, 11, and the four beasts had each of them six wings and about him. And they were full of eyes within 
and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when the, those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. Amen. The holiness of God is unspeakable, inexpressible, incomprehensible. And when you come before that holiness, the only thing that you can ever do is to continue to shout, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That's the only expression you can give because that which you behold, you have no words to describe. Just like the glory of God, the holiness of God and the glory of God are inexpressible. Number two, as I said, you want to know something about the one before whom you want to go, you are, you are, you are, you are prepared to come to. The, one, the first one is holy, his holiness. Number two, he is called Jehovah. The name of the independent, self-complete being, Jehovah. Independent, self-complete being. Who says, I am who I am? What do you understand by that? Incomprehensible. I am who I am. Awesome. Inexpressible. Only belongs, that Jehovah, belongs to Jehovah God. Our proper response to him is to fall down in fear and awe of the one who possesses all authority. That is the one you want to come and wait on in his presence. Jehovah, I am who I am. Go figure. Number three, you can see that in Exodus chapter three, 13 to 15, Exodus chapter 3, 13 to 15. Number three, Jehovah Mikadesh. You want to appear before Jehovah Mikadesh. This name means the God who sanctifies, a God separate from all that is evil, requires that the people who follow him be cleansed from all evil. That is the God you are preparing to come before and wait on him for dialogue, for a conference, for a meeting. Leviticus chapter 20, seven to eight. Jehovah Mekadosh, the one who sanctifies. Number four. An infinite God. You are coming before an infinite God. What does that mean? God is beyond measurement. We cannot define him by size or amount. In other words, you cannot contain him. You cannot restrict him. You cannot uh, bottle him up. Infinite God, beyond measurement. You cannot define him by limitation of time and space. He has no beginning, no end, and no limits. Romans 11, 33. Romans 11, 33. Number five, you are coming before an omnipotent God. God is all powerful. 
he spoke all things into being and all things, every cell, every breath, every thought are sustained by him. Nothing is too difficult for him. Jeremiah 32, 17 to 18, Jeremiah 32, 26 to 27. That is the nature of the God that you are coming to have dialogue with. He sustains everything and nothing shall be impossible for him to do. Isn't that a good thing, hopeful thing, that no matter what has gone wrong with you and what has gone uh, 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 the wrong way with the project that you are, he can correct it. He can right the wrongs that you find in your life. Amen? The God we're talking about is immutable. He is immutable. All that God is, he has always been. All that he has been and is, he will ever be. He is ever perfect and unchanging. He says, I am God and I change not. So if God was trusted yesterday or a thousand years ago, 5,000 years ago, he is the same, he can still be trusted today. If people who have gone before you have gone to God and received reprieve and received blessing and their lives changed and restored, if you go and wait upon him, you can still receive the same. That's the God that you are going to wait on in this coming 21 days. Psalm 102, 25 to 28. He is transcendent. The God, our God is transcendent. God is not simply the highest in an order of beings. This will be to grant him eminence among others. No, he is transcendent, existing beyond and above the created universe. Hallelujah. In other words, he's not comparable to any high person or any high thing, any authority. Any created his transcendence is above all of them. That is the God that is your God who has lovingly invite you, invited you into his presence. Come and wait on me. Come, come to me. Come and renew your strength. Come and be refreshed. Come, let me cleanse you and put you back in that which you, your purpose is. For my thought for you is for peace. You're not having peace. You're struggling with issues. You're stressed out. You're, 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 you're fatigued. You're exhausted. That is not my plan for you. I wish that you may prosper and be in health, even as you're so prosperous. Come. Come dialogue with me. Command you, command you me concerning the works of my hand. Decree a sin, a righteous thing, and it shall be established for you. If you are having problem on earth, I give you power to tread upon all their powers. I give you power. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven for you. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven for you. As long as they are directed at accomplishing the purpose for which I created you. As long as all these things work together to make you and transform you into the image and person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can look at Psalm 113, 4 to 5. 113, 4 to 5. He is transcendent. Our God is just. God is righteous and holy, fair and equitable in all things. Are you following me? We can trust him to always do what is right. God can never do wrong. Psalm 75, 1 to 7. 
Psalm 75, 1 to 7. Number eight, the God you are preparing to present yourself to and before is sovereign. He is the sovereign Lord. God presides over every event, great or small, and he is in control of our lives. To be sovereign, he must be all-knowing and all-powerful, and by his sovereignty, he rules his entire creation. That is the God for whom nothing shall be impossible. So what is that concern of yours that you want to present before him when you come into his presence to wait on him? Nothing shall be impossible for him. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Exodus 17, 8 to 15. Exodus 17. 8 to 15. Amen. He is wise. This God is wise. All God's acts are accomplished through his infinite wisdom. He always acts for our good, which is to conform us to Christ. Our good and his glory are inextricably bound together. The primary purpose of God for you is to get you to conform to Christ. That way you will fulfill your destiny. And that is what he wants to do with you and for you in his wisdom. Remember this year we've been praying for wisdom. We've been praying for being strengthened. It's because God wants to put you in a shape that will enable you to do that which he has called you to do. There you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And for you to do all those things, you have to come to a place where you can be refreshed or renewed, where you can mount up with wings as eagle, where you can remain in freshness and quickening of the spirit and body to actively engage and accomplish that for which has called you. Do you know what meaning, what it means to be called of God? It means he trusts you. And if God trusts you, can you afford to let him down? <clears throat> and when you are letting him down, instead of being angry at you, he's inviting you to a conference. He's inviting you to a banquet. Let's eat, drink, and have a loving discussion about the project that your life is. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 19 and 20. Proverbs 3, 19 and 20. 11, our God is faithful. He is faithful. Out of his faithfulness, God honors his covenants and fulfills his promises. As I've always emphasized, God is a covenant-keeping God. He will not have anything to do with you. He's not obligated to hear you, to respond to you, to do anything for you, to protect you, if there is no reason for that, if there is no covenant situation, relationship existing between you. So it's a faithful God based on his covenant. He keeps his covenant. And if you have a covenant with God, you can come into his presence. Otherwise, you cannot come into his presence. Our hope for the future rests upon God's faithfulness. Amen. Psalm 89, 1 to 8. Psalm 89, 1 to 8. Our God is a faithful covenant keeping God. Number 12. Our God is also a wrathful God. A wrathful God. Unlike human anger, God's wrath is never 
capricious or irritable. It's never capricious, vengeful, or irritable. It is the right and necessary response to objective moral evil. God, wrath only comes, ensues because of uh, 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 moral evil that is perpetuated. He speaks and avenges that. Numbers chapter one, one uh, two to eight. Numbers chapter one two to eight about the wrath of God. Amen. These are twelve attributes and characteristics of God that you will consider before going before him. So that you do not go before him just as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, it asserts it once. You should not go carelessly. You should consider your faith where you go. You should consider your behavior, your conduct, your, your utterances. You don't just rush in there and taking his presence for granted. You don't, you don't allow familiarity to bring content. The Bible says God does not suffer fools lightly. Don't come before him foolish. Be wise. Amen. Hallelujah. Having considered the above, how do you then go into the presence of such an awesome God to wait on him and conduct yourself approvingly. How do you do that? You should be concerned because he's too powerful and cannot be compared with anything. If he begins to do something against you, no one can stand in between. No. And as the same thing goes that when he begins to bless you and promote you, no one, no one can stop him. The Bible says, has he said a thing and it did not come to pass? When he speaks concerning you, his word stands, cannot come back to him void. It's impossible for that which God had said not to happen. True prophecies must come to pass. True word of knowledge inspired by the Holy Spirit cannot fail. If anyone says, I am prophesying that God will do so, 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 and so, but go and pray, the person did not prophesy. Because a prophecy means it has been done already in the spirit. You're only speaking it before it manifests. Whether you prayed or not, it will come to pass. But coming to pass does not mean that you benefit from it or that you will see it. If you are not paying attention, it will come to pass and you will not see it because you are not paying attention. It doesn't mean it didn't come to pass. He says, I hasten my world to perform it. As long as it has gone out of his mouth because he's not a liar, it will come to pass. So whenever you go to God and he blesses you and places a blessing upon you, it will come to pass. But out of your own carelessness, you may not see it. Will it come to pass? It will come to pass. For sure, without fear. We don't make our limitations the limitations of God. We judge God by our own human limitations and standards. God is transcendent. It's far beyond and above all created things. And when his word goes out of his mouth, his word is like him. You cannot divorce or separate God's word from God. I watch it to fulfill it, hasten to fulfill it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So having considered the above, how do you go? Into his presence, such into the presence of such an awesome God to wait on him and conduct yourself approvingly. I will say, by knowledge and preparation, 
you know who God is. Just as we have enumerated only 12 characteristics, there are many more because of time. We're limited to 12. And then, based on that knowledge, you prepare yourself adequately and properly to be presented before him approvingly. That's why he gave you wisdom to know what to do and the Holy Spirit to help you, to package you, to bring you so that you can be comfortable in his presence. And there you can have the dialogue. There you can have the meeting. There you can have the conversation. There you can review you, you your life as a project that God has set forth. Your relationship with God is not about give me, give me, I pray for this. It's more than that. It's lack of knowledge that makes us keep God in that little place where he says in Hebrews chapter 6, let us go beyond the foundational primary things. Let us go and proceed and advance into perfection. Are you hear people say you cannot be perfect because it's impossible to be perfect in this simple world? Are you saying that God is lying when he said, come to me, be ye perfect for I am perfect. Come, progress to perfection. But while you are waiting on God and understand the character of God, the characteristics of God, the attributes of God and all those things, the Bible says, you gaze as in a mirror, his glory, his person. Just as our sister was saying during the family time. When you know the word of God, you should become that word. Because that is who you are. That was why it was spoken to you. Your existence is by the word. Remember the Bible said in John chapter 1, John verse 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God. And that same word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Apart from that, it's the light. The word is the light, and his light is our life. So if the word is light and it's our life, then you should reflect that word in your daily conversation and conduct as a Christian. And when this is lacking, you say, come, 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 come. Let's start again. Let's have a meeting. Let's have a conversation. Not condemnation, but conversation. Come, let us reason together. And that is what we intend to do. We propose to do. We program to do. In these 21 days. Coming. As we wait upon him. We wait on him. In his presence. Amen. What do you do? You prepare based on the knowledge of him that you have and then prepare accordingly. The first way to prepare, let me begin to wind up, is to sanctify yourself. Remember, he's a holy God. Sanctify yourself through spiritual and heart cleansing. Isaiah chapter 1, Verse 16, come, let us reason together. Cleanse, be cleansed. Exodus 19, 10 and 14. It's the way you come before him. Sanctify yourself. Wash yourself with water. Cleanse your garment. Make yourself clean. You are coming into a holy God. Remember the saying, cleanliness is godliness. Even though it's not in the Bible, but it makes sense. For God says, as you draw near to me, wash away your filthiness in the flesh and otherwise. So the first thing you do in preparing to God is to first of all, go into a period of prayer for cleansing and sanctification. Our time is going, so let me rush along. Number two, 
Wash yourself clean from every filthiness of the flesh and environment. Maintain cleanliness in your person, garment, and home. Preparation for waiting on God. Sanctification of the spirit, of the mind. Washing with water, physical cleansing. Maintain that sense of cleanliness. That you not be abhorrent before God. Number three, humble yourself before your God and maintain a quiet spirit. You're going before God, there shall be no hotness in your spirit. There's no, no pride of life. But humble yourself. He said that when you humble yourself, you'll exalt you. And uh, 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 Isaiah 57, 15. Let's read Isaiah 57, 15. I think it's important that we mention that even though our time, Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, 15. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 57, 15 says, You see, for thus said the high and lofty one that inhabits that eternity. Oh, what a description of this awesome God. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. That's the God of God we worship. Humble yourself where you want to come because he says he will dwell with you. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, put away all unforgiveness and forgive all offense. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Put away impure preparation, put away offense, put away forgiveness or unforgiveness. Forgive people who offend you. And then lastly, in your preparation, maintain a cheerful countenance. Matthew 6, 16 and 8 to 18. Matthew 6, 16. If you, in your preparation, in an attempt, or desire to meet with God, to wait on God, do all these things. You have a channel open to you into his presence where he will accept you, acknowledge you, accept you, and have conference, dialogue, and conversation with you. That is the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. As we go into the season of 21 days of waiting on God with prayers and fasting, be sure to do these things in your preparation to go before the Lord in this program. Are you ready to appear before God? Have you done these things? So that your effort in fasting and praying will not be in vain. Will your presence and supplication be acceptable before our awesome God? Are you ready to meet with him? Do you realize that you have to do those things? Do you realize that whatever you do with God has conditions? Because every covenant has conditions. There are parameters. There are measures, there are standards that must be kept. 
a covenant between you and God and between or between any other person is a covenant because it's restricted and de- confined to those people in that covenant relationship. Anybody cannot come and interfere and walk into it and behave as it's part of the covenant. It will, it will, not, it will not work. It's between you and God. So that, that relationship has conditions that qualifies the honoring and maintenance of that covenant, which is binding. So the Lord wants you as a holy God with this attribute that we have considered. We only consider 12, there are many others. To want you to keep them, to observe them, to know them, to realize them, to acknowledge them, so that you will take them into consideration in your preparation to be with him. And there you can have comfortable conversation. Are you ready for this program? Let us pray. If you are not born again yet, this discussion will not apply to you. Because until you are born again and have that covenant, relationship with him, that Jesus Christ, our Lord, emphasized on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when he said, this is a new covenant in my blood, a new covenant in my blood. Are you in that covenant or are you under that covenant in the blood of Jesus? If you are not, I think the place to start today so that you can have a conference with God to fix those things that are wrong in your life is to start by giving your life to Jesus Christ and become a subscriber to that new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you give your life to Jesus Christ today so that you can become a beneficiary of what we are discussing and have your life changed today and put you in a situation and position where you can have dialogue with Almighty God, the awesome God of all creation, who is above all things and with whom nothing shall be impossible. By his spirit, he has called you today. The word has gone out. Do not allow your fasting to be mere self-starvation. Make it an acceptable conversation and supplication in the presence of God to accomplish a purpose for which he said, come, let us reason together. Come, I will take away your, your body. I will take away your labor and set you free and give you peace. You can give your life to Jesus today by inviting him into your heart. I say, come into my heart. I have been a sinner all my life. I confess my sins today, Lord. Forgive me. I repent of them not to go back to them. I believe that you, Lord Jesus Christ, are the son of God, born by a virgin Mary, by the virgin Mary. He was crucified, the dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He paid for my sin fully. I accept it. And he has risen from the dead and gone and sit at the right hand of the Father in heaven. I believe it with my heart. Write my name in the book of life today, Lord. And send your spirit in my heart. I thank you for hearing me today and giving me a new life in Christ Jesus. Praise God, I am born again. I am a son of God. And if you're already born again, there are things you have to do. Pray for sanctification. For in the book of Thessalonians, the Bible says that the will of God for you is even your sanctification. That's the will of God for you. Pray, Lord, and say, sanctify me. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. 
spirit, mind, my conscience, my body, cleanse me from every filthiness of the spirit, soul, and body of my mind. Sanctify me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Sanctify me by giving me a circumcision of the heart today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Ask for that sanctification as you pray right now. We shall seal these prayers with the communion we are going to take this morning. Ask for that sanctification. Pray again and say, Lord, wash me with the water of your word. Give me the grace to recognize physical filthiness because of the contamination of the world in which I live. I wash today myself and give me a sense of cleanliness that physically I will wash my garments, I will wash my environment, I will wash the things that I use. I shall not live in filthiness. For you are a holy, clean God. Help me to recognize the areas in my life that are accommodate filthiness. Pray that there shall be no foul order that makes God push you away. And we know that foul orders come from sin. Pray and wash yourself in the water of the world before you go into the presence of the fearful and almighty God. Number three, pray and humble yourself. We have problems of pride and haughtiness in our spirit. We boast of things that we have no hand in doing. For there is nothing that you have that is not given to you. Pray for that humble spirit. Hallelujah. So for thus says the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Pray that God will give you and that you will receive and maintain a humble spirit. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Pray for that humility, not just before God and unto God alone, but become a humble person across the board with people. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Number four, pray that God will give you the grace, the grace that enables you to do away with every and all unforgiveness. It might be a little difficult, but it is possible. For God commands you to forgive your enemies, forgive those who have despicably abused you and treated you very bad so that he in turn can forgive you. Amen? Ask for the power to forgive. Truly forgiveness from your heart. Pray. Talk to God. As a matter of fact, you could have even unmuted while you pray. Speak this because you have to prepare yourself adequately before the Almighty God. Ask these prayers today. And finally, maintain throughout this period a cheerful countenance. Don't go disfiguring your face. Oh, we are doing fasting so that people will sympathize with you. The fastness in the flesh. Be cheerful. Be exuberant. Be joyful. You cannot be in the presence of God and be depressed. 
We cannot be in the presence of God and be unhappy and sad. We cannot be in the presence of God and not be joyful. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank God for these graces. If you have written anything down, go and pray these prayers. During this period of waiting on God, so that you can come into the presence and reality of the power of God in your life. You are losing the hand of the Holy Spirit to take you to places and heights that you have not experienced before. Just like the, uh, 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 the testimony given by our sister, relating the testimony given by our sister, The lady who cursed, confronted, commanded, pulled down, exercising the authority that God has given to you and I in Jeremiah chapter one from verse five, I give you power to root out, to pull down, to cast down, to break, to build and to establish. Are you using that power? During this period, the Holy Spirit will expose you to that power and manifest the awesomeness that God has made you of when you occupy for him. He says, occupy till I come. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and he will by no means hurt you. You have power to uproot, to cast down, to destroy. You have power to build and to establish. For God is with you. Holy Spirit is that God that is with you. You can act on behalf of God and the words of your mouth will be powerful. All this can happen in this period of waiting on God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the week and the days and week and months ahead of us to walk in the fullness of your presence, to walk in full conviction of that which you have already made us into, to express your desire, to pray according to your will. For there shall be during this period a manifestation of the Son of God in us to destroy all the works of the devil. We thank you, Father God Almighty, for this call to come before you and wait at your feet, that your will might be established and your counsel of hell. We thank you, Father God Almighty, as we receive power to even so come into your presence and we receive power to hear from you, we receive power to do all things because of Christ that is in us, for in him we triumph. We thank you, Father God Almighty, because even as we have prepared ourselves to come before you, our presence and our supplication shall be acceptable unto you. We thank you for lives that will be fixed corrected. We thank you for errors that will be destroyed by the entrance of your word and the entrance of your life to make the simple wise. We thank you for that God Almighty for it were, if it were not possible you would not have invited us to come to this time to wait on you for this conference, for this deliberation, for this conversation for this meeting. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercies, for your loving kindness, for your wonderful grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, you can unmute. Prepare your cup. Prepare your bread very quickly. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Ye kasali brondori na 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 makushinda na na Ah God, it's an awesome God. He wins from heaven above with we storm power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with we. Strong power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with we. Strong power and love, our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Have you prepared your bread? Break it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah, and take off it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Receive this. For hidden in your body. Anywhere you're hurting, receive the bread. For hidden is the meat of the children. Receive the bread, it's the bread of the children. The body of Christ broken for you, for your healing. By his stripes, you are healed. By faith, receive that healing right now. For you have an awesome God with whom nothing shall be impossible. Who is above in his transcendency, beyond limitation. That is the God in whom you trust right now. Take up your cup. The Lord said after the same manner, he took up this cup. And said, this is a new covenant in my blood. After he has supped, that as often as you do this, you drink of this cup, you share in my body, do it in remembrance of me. Do it in remembrance of the thing that I have accomplished when I said it is finished. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let's stick together. Hallelujah. Brethren, you are ushered into this program on waiting on God in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Enter it, observe it, go before the Lord in the power of his might. And there shall be open unto you access. For the Bible says in um, Romans chapter 5 that we have access into his presence, into his grace by the blood of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Go in his power, in his energy, in his spirit, in his might.
accomplish that which he has laid out for you to accomplish when he says, come, let us resume together. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord.